Hello, this is Madge Leoparte, a member of the Design Tools Marketing Team at Laddie Semiconductor. This is a series of training of the Lattice Read and Software Tool Flow. We have Sukruth Kumar Krishnamurthy to walk through the step-by-step -step process. For this first episode, he will discuss how to get started with Radiant, how to create a project, add design source files, up to IP instantiation. Hi, welcome to Lattice Radiant Software Toolflow Training. My name is Sukruth Kumar Krishnamurthy. I work as an applications engineer responsible for design software tools. Today, through this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Lattice Radiant tool and some of the features we have in the Lattice Radiant software. Getting started. Latest Radiant software can be downloaded from our website, latticesemi.com. And here's the link to the download page. Once you open the link, you will see separate installers for Windows and Linux, along with the installers for our standalone tools. If you are installing the base Radiant software tool, all the standalone tools will be a part of the installation. Even though Lattice Radiant software is free to use, you will require a license to access synthesis and simulation tools. For all the other additional features such as IP, devices, etc., you will have to contact lickadmin, lick underscore admin at latticemi.com. Please note, Radiant checks for a valid license at every launch of the tool. Here are some of the information on how to request your license. Once you receive the license, it should be copied over to the license tree, which will be inside Radiant installation directory. With that, we are done with the introduction. Now let us see how to use Lattice Radiant software. The first thing that you see after you launch Lattice Radiant is the start page. Through the start page, you will be able to create a new project, open an existing project, or even open some of the example designs that are provided along with the software. Along with this, you will also be able to access our online help through getting started, some of the tutorials, user guides, and also the center. On the right hand side, you can access all the recent projects. Let us start by creating a new project. The new project wizard will guide us through the creation of a new project. Provide a name to project. You can browse through the location where you want to save this project. You can also give a name to your implementation. Here, you will be adding the source files you already created one. If you want to add new source files, you can always do that once the project is created. For this tutorial, I already have source, uh, source files created, so I'll be adding them using add source. Click on this. This is the device selection page. Through this page, you will be able to select different FPGAs that are available through Radiant. You can also access the devices, their packages, operating condition, performance grade, and part numbers. For each of the devices that you choose, you will be able to see the device information on the left on the right hand side. This information gives us the number of logic cells that are used in the, in the device, number of LUTs, registers, PBR blocks, PLLs, DLLs, PCS, PIO pins, and PIO cells. For this tutorial, I'm going to choose Crosslink NX LIFCL 40K with a package of CABGA400. I'm going to choose a points grade of 9, which is pretty high. And this is the part number. Click on Next when you're done with the device selection. Radiant offers two synthesis engines. Simplify Pro is from Synopsys, and Lattice LSE is from Lattice. For this tutorial, I'm going to use Lattice LSE as a synthesis engine. This is the project information summary table. Here you will be able to see what you selected 
through the new project creation wizard. If you see that you have to change some of the things, you can always go back and change them. When you're sure of the creation, click on finish. Here's how Radiant project window looks like. On the left hand side, you can see the project navigator where you can change the strategy. You can add input files. On the top, you can see the process window where you can do the synthesis, map, place and route and export files. Here's the report section which gives the report of all the processes that you ran. You can also see the project summary here and there's a link to the implementation location as well for easy access. Once you're done with synthesis or map or place and route, the resource usage table gets updated based on the results of synthesis and place and route. Let us now briefly talk about the strategy options. A strategy is a unified view of all the settings related to the optimization controls of an implementation tool, such as logic synthesis, mapping, and place and route. There are two different kinds of strategies, a predefined strategy and a custom strategy. Radiant already comes with two predefined strategies for area and timing. The area strategy attempts to minimize the area by enabling the tight packaging options available in MAP using the strategy to achieve area requirements. Applying the strategy to a large and dense design may cause some difficulties in a place and route process with longer runtime or completing routing. However, when it works, you will see an area reduction. We also have a timing predefined strategy. The timing strategy attempts to achieve timing closure. This timing strategy uses a very different effort level in place and route. Use the strategy if you are trying to reach the maximum frequency on your design. If you cannot meet timing requirements with this strategy, try to customize a strategy with individual, with individual settings. This strategy may increase your runtime on place and route compared to quick and area strategies. However, you will get improved timing performance results when it works. Along with that, we also have customized strategy. You can also customize any of these strategy with various options. Double click on the strategy in the name of the file and open the strategies dialog box like this. You can edit any of these options for optimal results. Along with that, you can also clone any previously created strategy or any of the latest predefined strategies from the file list view. The new cloned file contains all settings of the strategy being cloned. You can then modify the settings for the cloned strategy from within the strategies dialog box. To clone a strategy, right click on the strategy and select clone strategy. You can provide the name of the strategy here. You can also save it to a different location and click on OK. As you can see, we have successfully cloned a strategy. To set, a, to set an active strategy, if you have more than one strategy in a project, you can right click on the strategy that you want to make active and choose set as active strategy. The active strategy will be highlighted and it will be easy for you to recognize which strategy is active in the current project. Let us now talk about the source editor and the input files. As you can see, all the input files that we added appear under input files. The top level file is always highlighted and you can also see the hierarchy from the hierarchy view here. If you can expand these windows, if you can expand these, you will be able to see the hierarchy of the entire project. If you want to add new files to this, right click on the input file and choose add. You can either add a new file or an exist file from this wizard. If you want to add a new file, click on the new file. As you can see, you will be able to add power calculator files, reveal files, or even input HDL files. You can type in the name of the file and click on new and close this. 
if you want to edit an existing file double click on the file and it opens as in the source editor for easy design experience radiant comes with source templates and ip catalog click on source template to access all the source templates as you can see we have very log source templates vhdl source templates and even constraint templates expand each of them to find different templates for each of the design that you want to use if you want to use common templates we have a lot of common templates that can be used in the design if you want to use pmi templates here are the pmi templates for ice 40 ultra plus and lifcl and crosslink nx and certus nx if you want primitive templates all the primitive templates can be found under primitive templates you can also create a, a new template using this user templates right click on the user templates and create a new folder or a new template for an example let's say i want to add an always block into my design click on the always block and you can see the template here you can either drag and drop the always block in source editor or you can copy and paste them directly onto your source editor along with the source templates we also have an ip catalog which has a lot of ips that can be used in the design as you can see we have a couple of locally available ips and we also have other ips that are available on the server some of these ips require a special feature license to use and to request to request for those licenses please contact our license administrator all the ips that are available locally are free to use we have adc module ips arithmetic module ips we also have ddr ips we also have arithmetic module ips along with that we also have dsp arithmetic ips and memory modules if you click on the question mark it, it gives the ip description along with the device supported click on the user guide to access the user guide of the device of the ip for this tutorial let us try to create a simple pll ip double click on the pll ip type in the name of the ip click on next you will be able to configure the ip through this ip configurator once the ip is configured click on generate to generate the ip make sure you have clicked on insert to project and click on finish once the ip is configured it appears under the file list as you can see here the my pll ip has appeared under the input file list let us now instantiate this pll ip into the design right click on the pll ipx and copy the verilog instantiation you can paste it in the source editor give an instance name and make the required connections once all the changes are made save the file now you can see the hierarchy is updated with my pll ip these are the topics that we have accomplished for today how to get started with radiant how to create a new radiant project how to add design source files and how to instantiate an ip using an ip catalog the next part will be about simulation wizard how to add constraints and the different debugging tools inside radiant software Thank you for watching.